the next presentation will be actually shared out and will be coming from Lödige. Um, the presentation title will be uh, Powder Blending in the Food Industry, and we will learn more about challenges and cleaning. It will be shared between Sebastian Steinkamp and Riz Morris. Just a little bit of background about both of them. Um, so Riz is the product manager working in Ally Pharma, who are an agency that represent a wide selection of process and packaging manufacturers from across the globe. Um, we have represented Lödige for the UK and the Irish market for nearly 15 years, and they have a great relationship with one each other. And Sebastian himself, he works for Lödige. Um, he has a master's in life sciences technologies. He is specialized in process engineering of food applications, <clears throat> 13 years of professional experience in research and development, process engineering and technical sales and distribution and covers the sales areas of China, Southeast Asia, South America and the UK. Um, so over to you guys. Yeah, thank you for the, for the warm welcome and the nice introduction. Uh, I will start the presentation and my, my friend Reese will we we'll start the first uh, the first slides and then I jump into the presentation and we'll we'll do the rest. Hopefully it, it works. So uh, yeah, th thanks again for for the invitation. Thanks for having us. And uh, yeah, we we don't speak so much about scientific uh, stuff. We are more uh, common in the in the process engineering and mechanical engineering um, area. And therefore, our presentation, yeah, throws a, a view on, on the challenges of powder blending in food industry in general, and of course, uh, homo homogeneity, cleaning, and hygienic design. Okay, Reese, it's your turn. Perfect. Thanks very much, Sebastian. Um, so we're going to go over briefly today uh, just a little bit about Ludiger. Um, they've been based in Paderborn now. They've been manufacturing. Uh, mixing machines and applications for over 80 years. Um, it's not just plowshare mixes that they uh, they produce. Um, they also do uh, coating systems, granulators, dryers, reactors, um, and they were the first to invent the actual plowshare mixer. Um, you can see the facility here. Um, they've been there for over 80 years. They've got two different sides. They've got a carbon steel side. They've got a stainless steel side, so they make sure that there's no mixtures in the two. Um, the facility uh, houses over 400 employees and um, yeah, if you guys would ever like to go over there or if you're ever near Paderborn and you want to be introduced to the team, by all means, we, we quite happily show you around the facility anytime. Um, so obviously Sebastian is going to be talking a lot about today about the cleaning side of things um, with food. Uh, that's not just the only industries that they're in. They can um, apply all the different applications to many different areas, uh, loads of different industries. We've got the building industry, we've got the farm industry, cosmetics, environments, plastics, you name it, um, we're able to supply it. Um, and these are the different kind of applications we can apply to. Um, what's also good about Ludiger is they house an actual test facility on site. Um, so if you're not too sure how your product would behave, um, we can certainly take your products from you. Uh, we can run internal trials uh, when the world's a little bit more normal. Um, we can actually invite you over and you can take part in those trials um, and you can actually watch the whole process. Um, you can take the, uh, the product back with you. You can analyze it. And you can make sure that it's basically meeting everything in your needs. Um, yeah, great company. Love to work for them. And uh, yeah, look forward to working with them for in the future as well. So that's my part over and done with. I'll now pass you over to my uh, handsome colleague, Sebastian, and he can go into a bit more detail. Thank you, Reese. I will, I will tell your boss that you speak good about our company. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sebastian. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, now let, let's come to the cleaning challenges in food industry. Um, I, I would say that in the market, there are a lot of different blenders, mixers, all do do a good job, some not so good, but um, at the end, uh, the challenges in the in the last five years is really the cleaning, the the hygienic design of the machine. So I would say nearly ninety percent of all inquiries I get is uh, focused on cleaning and hygienic design. 
and yeah, the, the food market or the food industry is getting closer and closer to pharmaceutical applications. And therefore, yeah, we are focusing, focusing on cleaning today. So um, the, the challenges in, in baking and confectionery or food industry is that we are facing a lot of different, um, different products, baby nutrition, baking, vanilla sugar, you can see chocolate, very common um, vitamin preparation, the, the dietary food, uh, also nutritional supplements, the, the protein shakes are very common. So nearly everything you, you eat or drink is yeah, coming from, from powder or a lot of products are coming from powder or has to be mixed. And yeah, uh, our mixers can, can do every, every product you can see here. And some customers, they have also different products. And yeah, if you have change over in recipe or whatever, then you have to clean. Um, yeah, you see uh, a lot of product. I, I, have, I have a customer, for instance, it's an example. They have a product line of 4,500 4, recipes. They have over 3,000 raw materials. Uh, some recipes, this is, for instance, a recipe for a, a protein shake for the guys who need, who need the strengths for, 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 for bodybuilding or whatever. Uh, they, they have uh, sometimes... 55 uh, different dry ingredients. Then you have also small ingredients from 0 0.001 up to 45% of uh, the recipe. You have a liquid fraction, one to 15%. So you have to mix everything very good. And uh, at the end, if you have so, so many different raw materials, you have to clean. and. Um, yeah, cleaning is of course mandatory to, to avoid any cross contamination. And uh, okay, the cleaning is of course a large put, uh, yeah, a, a large production time. So my, my former uh, boss always told me he was production manager that the most or the, the recipe which runs most in his company is, is cleaning. Uh, yeah, some, some companies try to avoid a contamination maybe of, of color uh, in order yeah to they they organize the production days for instance on monday they go with a sugar white blend on tuesday they're doing a crossing mix which is a bit a bit uh, yeah more darker then they have a crumble topping which is um, going yellow or brownish then you have a carrot cake you see this all British or English products, as pictures from an English company in our test center. And on Friday, uh, you have yeah, a chocolate mix. So you see the color goes darker in the week. And so they, they avoid that they have to clean too much because cleaning, cleaning time is yeah, no money producing time. Uh, yeah, we do the cleaning, of course. Uh, we don't want to have any affection on the taste. Maybe if you have flavors, uh, aromas, colors, you don't want to have the contamination of the products yeah, which are following. And of course, uh, another very big issue are the, the 14 major allergens. And uh, yeah, this is something we also have in mind. And in the future, with coming more and more that the customers and the food companies want to produce allergen free. Okay, this is a short excursus uh, of dry cleaning is also what the majority of the companies do these days. They do not a wet cleaning, they do a white, uh, a, a dry cleaning. And in general, the wet cleaning followed by drying is of course the safest mode uh, method to minimize cross contamination. But this is, of course, time consuming, especially the drying and, of course, expensive. And uh, yeah, therefore, dry cleaning is fastest method, but of, with the high risk of cross contamination. So with uh, dry cleaning, you cannot get rid of allergens and also microbiology. And uh, yeah, therefore, uh, many customers go for a, a wet cleaning and uh, Nevertheless, I want to show what dry cleaning really means. Dry cleaning is 
yeah, like scraping or vacuum cleaning the mixer from inside. But there's also the po possibility, some customer call it extended dry cleaning. So they use a kind of dry cleaning agent. It's normally salt or sugar, so crystalline products. Um, uh, uh, other, other components can be, uh, normally it is uh, a, a, an ingredient of the recipe. And then they do it like this. So this is our mixer. You see, this is during the mixing, the feeding is from top, the mixer mix the product very good. And, after, and then we discharge to the bottom. This is how it goes. Um, so we have uh, the mixer, step one, we have the mixer filled with uh, sticky powdered ingredients. You do the mixing, everything is fine. And then uh, you discharge the well-mixed product. And at the end, if you have a sticky product with maybe a, a high liquid or fat fraction, uh, yeah, you have residue in, in the mixer. It's uh, very common that it's on the bottom and uh, on the shaft and the mixing tools. But uh, after that, you, you fill the, the mixer with the cleaning agent. Maybe in this case, it can be, can be salt. You do the mixing with maximum speed. And uh, yeah, then to discharge. And because of the structure, uh, the residue is, is minimized. And uh, yeah, so you spend some, or you, you, you are, you can uh, you need less time for for the dry cleaning so this is in general the basics how the customer do but again it is not it is a proper solution for for doing it fast uh, from time to time if the recipe is maybe not so different but uh, when you when it comes to allergen free production this is not the right choice so the right choice is what we speak about is uh, uh, WIP process. So it is called washing in place. So this means um, the machine is equipped with an automatic cleaning system, but you do have to, you have to do some certain actions by the operators, maybe connecting of washing lids or hoses, dismounting the filters, etc. So it is the, the process itself is running automatic, but uh, you have to do some some uh, actions before. Then we have uh, CIP. This is what all the people are speaking about. It's really a full automatic system. You just have to uh, press a button and everything is running. This is very difficult when it comes to mixers or blenders, nearly unimpossible. Um, you have cleaning out of place, which means you have machine parts dismounted and cleaned separately. You have sterilization in place. This is uh, after a complete cleaning cycle, the, when you have to sterilize by temperature, steam may in the in the main uh, in the most reasons, or chemical agent, uh, you have to sterilize the machine and drying when after wet cleaning, the machine has to be dried out. So, but we today we are speaking about washing in place. So washing in place is what we usually do. Uh, this is the mixer itself. You can see this is a 3D model. Uh, you have, uh, can you see the the my my arrow here? Okay. Yeah. So we have three um, three uh, choppers for liquid distribution. Here is the inlet for for the for the liquids, and uh, as you can see on top where we feed the mixer, uh, uh, you have connections for the cleaning media uh, to every. Uh, port on the top and you also have cleaning media lines stainless steel pipes uh, reaching the choppers and of course the um, the bearing of the mixer this is from the other side uh, here you see the stainless steel pipes this is where normally uh, or where during the the washing the water goes yeah, we do it like uh, at home. If you clean something, you always start from the top. So uh, when you start the cleaning process, the media supplies to the top ports. And there are three in every port are three uh, cleaning nozzles and they clean the, the inlets itself. This is the, the initial uh, situation. So the machine is, it's, I know it's a rough word, polluted, but it's okay, it's polluted with, with product. If your 
product can pollute anything. Um, during the production, our mixers have air purge seals for the shaft and also for the choppers, which means we avoid with overpressure that uh, product can uh, stick to the seals or whatever, even if you have flavors or colors that the flavors and colors can contaminate the, the ceiling. So we use air pressure and during the uh, during the washing process, the wet cleaning process, the, the, we switch from air to water and the water goes exactly the same way, which is a benefit that you also clean your ceilings. Um, yeah, the first step is, as you can see on top, there was a filter. Uh, you remove the filter. This is why we call it washing in place and uh, install the venting cap. And on the bottom of the mixer, you need uh, installation of the drain connection because you have to get rid of the water. You cannot flush your production hall. Um, then you switch from gas purge, air purge seals to water purge. You see the three choppers and the ceilings are uh, flushed with water. Then we start from the top. We start with warm water. So the, the inlets uh, yeah, are cleaned. And then we add from 20 to 30, sometimes 15%. It's, it's varying on, on the product uh, properties. It's a sticky product, the colors, et cetera. And then uh, we, we fill the machine, let's say 20% with water. And very important is we rotate then the, the mixing elements forward and backward and uh, the machine clean itself it's like like a washing machine after this step we draining the the wastewater uh, via the drain connection and after this we we clean the the whole discharge area also with uh, with cleaning nozzles that there's also no risk of contamination yeah, after this, if you're maybe in pharmaceutical company, you can do this uh, steps two to seven with warm water, detergents, purified water, whatever you can, you can uh, do it again and again. But uh, normally in food industry, customers do it just with really hot water. And after that, you blow out the uh, washing, the washing in place lines. So the stainless steel pipes with compressed air or nitrogen. And yeah, then uh, the coal system is, uh, is, is water free and uh, just there's a small uh, residue of water in the mixer. And uh, we have several possibilities to dry the mixers. Uh, drying is always the limiting factor. So the washing in place cycle itself takes maybe one hour and the, clear, uh, the drying can take a couple of hours. But uh, to, to improve this and fasten up this, we have machines with heating jackets. So if the steel is hot, then uh, you have, uh, you have the, 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 the machine dryer in, 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 in shorter time. Even better if you have a hot air blower or, or maybe you have a machine which can do a vacuum, then uh, the machine is drier very fast. Yeah, after this, you have a visible inspection and everything is fine. You can start uh, the production again. And yeah, first of all, you have to in, uh, install the filter again. And of course, get rid of uh, the drain connection. This is possible for all of the machines. My friend Reese told, told you that we also have coaters, dryers, and uh, granulators, and we can do these washing in place processes for all other machines. So LC is a coater on the top. On the bottom is MGT, it's called Mixing Granulating Technology. And for this uh, machines, it is also very common to, to clean it uh, with water. Okay, then um, my, the, 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 the next point is, is also very interesting for a lot of people. Uh, cleaning is good. I, I said visual inspection, visual inspection is also very good, but uh, we have to have a very valid method to see if the machine, machine is, really, is really clean or not. So we, what we often do because it's very easy is a uh, riboflavin testing. Uh, yeah, we, we do it with uh, vitamin, vitamin and it's a strong yellow color. And yeah, the, 
The best effect is the riboflavin glows if it's illuminated with ultraviolet light. And yeah, we, we use it as a tracer for visible inspection. And uh, of course, for the functionality and the efficiency of the VIP nozzles. It is an established method and most common for cleaning testing in pharmaceutical, in food industry, also in cosmetic industry. And there is a, a guideline how to test riboflavin with riboflavin. Uh, it is published and created by the VDMA. This is the document. You can you have a free access in, in the internet in English and German. And uh, I, I assume there are a lot of other uh, languages. And uh, there is very good uh, described how to do it. And uh, what we usually do is the, the weak point test. So we localize critical pro points where maybe the uh, washing is not so efficient as, as wanted. And uh, yeah, then you can do a cleanability test if it's in the next time after adjustments, it's, it's better. And then you have optimized your, your cleaning uh, process. Yeah, uh, how to do it? You, you do a riboflavin solution with a specific concentration, and then you do it, yeah, very simple with some spraying equipment as seen on the right side. Uh, the VDMA say a riboflavin in a 2 .2, uh, 0.02 solution is, is sufficient for testing. And uh, then, yeah, you spray really the complete inside of the machine, all contact parts of, uh, for, for the product, you spray with the riboflavin solution. And then, uh, yeah, you see, this is a customer of us. It's a guy from, from the US. He is very, very glad that he can do it. You see it in his face, he's very happy. And uh, yeah, he's, he's spraying the, the riboflavin solution on all contact surface. In the filter housing, in the feeding ports, uh, he has a small spray bottle. Maybe we all know it from, from our garden. Uh, very cheap and very easy. And yeah, on the right-hand side, you see an inside view in the feeding port. So everything is covered with uh, the solution. And then, yeah, after, after the first step, you do the complete cleaning cycle as shown before. And then we can start uh, with an uh, ultraviolet light, uh, the inspection, and of course, the document documentation of the results. So here we can see um, we, we uh, discovered a weak point. Uh, the spray, we have a spray shadow. This is the chopper, so uh, a high rotating tool one of the three choppers and you see near the ceiling there are there is still uh, the solution left so the machine was not uh, high enough filled with water and after this we uh, added instead of 20% filling degree with uh, water we took 25 and then after this uh, this weak spot was was gone another weak spot we found was uh, in the in the small inlet here, but this was more or less a technical issue because the rotating jet cleaner does not turn. It was yeah, it was damaged, and this was also very lucky for us because the machine was still in our company and we could uh, change the jet cleaner. And after yeah, changing the cleaner, everything was fine and uh, the customer was happy because everything was clean. And uh, this is also one major weak point, the safety grids. This is the safety grid on the, on the discharge or after the discharge on the bottom of the machine. Uh, yeah, in terms of, of safety, the European Union and also the UK law say, yeah, of course you are not, it, it, it is not allowed that people can grab into running machines. And uh, yeah, therefore there, the easiest way is a safety grid, but it's hard to clean because a lot of surfaces. And yeah, as you can see, um, there was still some of the solution left. And we, we did just an optimization of the cleaning recipe, which means that the last step, the cleaning of the discharge area was, was prolonged and a bit more intensive. And after that, 
uh, the complete uh, washing in place cycle was, was perfect and the machine was clean. Uh, just a sh short summar uh, summary, riboflavin testing is good and effective, it's very cheap and, and fast. Uh, just to test the functionality and the performance of the cleaning system. Uh, it helps to identify uh, weak, weak points in the, in the WIP system, and uh, it helps to optimize the cleaning recipes. But um, yeah, it's, it's, we, we do it in our in FAT, which means factory acceptance test. So it's in our factory or site acceptance test in the factory of the customer. It's both possible, but very important to know is Riboflavin is just an indication about the functionality and it is not uh, a validated uh, cleaning method. So for cleaning validation, it cannot be used. For cleaning validation, you have to do other tests like the following. For instance, the swap test. Uh, yeah, we do it also. The swap testing is, is for cleaning validation. You're swabbing a, a defined product uh, area. You see it on the right-hand side. Um, 25 uh, square centimeters with a suitable sample material, cotton wool, cotton stick, whatever. And then you put it in solvent uh, and uh, possible residue of the product or other contaminations are collected by sampling the material and can be analyzed with an HPLC, for instance. Um, yeah, and swabbing can take place on several defined positions. We normally all the, the, the operator knows what, what are weak points and then you can do it several of the machines with special sample templates. And yeah, and then you can calculate the overall pollution according to, to the test surface and the analysis methods. Another uh, possibility is uh, the direct contact test. Uh, direct contact test is also for cleaning validation. A lot of customers do this when they come to our uh, factory acceptance test. It's for microbiological contamination of surfaces and uh, with a special use of uh, Rodak plates. And uh, these Rodak plates have a standardized surface, also 25 uh, square centimeters, which is covered with a, a substrate and it's pressed for five to 10 seconds on the machine surface. And it's um, after the testing with the plates, uh, they have to be immediately closed and stored in the incubator and for a certain period of time. And of course, temperature and uh, yeah, the germ growth. And according to time of germs and amount of colonies, the grade of pollution can be calculated. And then uh, you can see if the machine um, clean or not. Then this is also also common. This is the last test I will I will uh, present is the rinse test. So rinse test is an inline test um, where the the whole product contact surface uh, uh, or the, rinsing the whole contact surface with water or solvent. For the final rinse test, the cleaning water from the from the last step or a cleaning sequence can also last cleaning in pharma is, is, is often AP water, is collected and analyzed. And uh, the analysis can take place directly in the wastewater or in line by conductivity measurement. And on the right hand, you see, um, for instance, the ultra pure water have five, 55 nano Siemens per square meter and process water food, you see it's, in, it's increasing. And then you can see uh, depending on the on the values, if is the machine clean or not? Um, for uh, the solvent rinsing test, is an ad additional solvent necessary, and uh, yeah, it has to be carried out after regular cleaning sequence. And of course, the solvent is chosen according to the product's character characteristics. And uh, yeah, after and then the solvent can be sampled and collected and analyzed. Okay, this because cleaning and hygienic design is a very wide field. This was a short and short uh, and fast overview. Here you see my, my contact details. If you have questions, do not hesitate to contact me. I'm always glad to have questions and emails and telephone conversations in these days. And uh, yeah, 
thank you. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I'm happy to, to have or to answer questions. Yeah, thank you, Sebastian. Um, I actually got only one question in so far. Um, someone asking uh, if you also look at, wait, well, Jahinda asking if you also look into steam cleaning and how that compares. Yeah. Uh, the the steril sterilization in, in place. It's, yeah, uh, we, we can also do it. Um, it is the, the, the we, we can introduce the steam directly into the mixing chamber. And uh, of course, depending on the product, you have to uh, yeah, we have to evaluate the, the amount of steam and the time, the duration of the time. And you really just inject it directly into the mixing chamber. So this whole system is heating up. And then after the steam, uh, the steam sterilization, you can do the testing as shown. And then you see is everything really uh, is really clean from microbiological point of view or not. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you, Wes. Um, Welcome. Thank you. Amos is asking any board comment about hyperallergenic processing. Is generic 0.6 to 1% NaOH at 65 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes CIP generally sufficient in your experience? So for me? Uh, yeah. Okay, I let. Okay. Uh, normally, normally I would say yes. I would say yes, but um, again, if you if you have a machine, uh, we are a tailor-made machine producer, which means not all machines look look the same. There are some some um, installation and some some areas which are different, always different, and. Um, in general, it is it is sufficient, but uh, I would go every time uh, to do really a, a cleaning validation with testing to see if uh, the machine is proper cleaned or not. It is very difficult, as as, as mentioned. Some customers have more than thousand, more than two or three thousand different recipes. All recipes, all ingredients need uh, different. Uh, detergents or different cleaning agent and different um, yeah properties for cleaning. So it, in general, it's it's okay. But uh, yeah, I I would always go for a, for a cleaning validation to see if really is everything clean or not. I hope okay. this is thank yeah. you. Welcome.